Hi everyone, Exony Sight Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you guys are doing well. And this is a video that I'm going to title The Life of Pablo Redux. Me essentially returning to Kanye's 2016 album, The Life of Pablo. Kanye West, you most likely already know him, rap superstar, singer, rapper, producer, visionary, man. Visionary. I've done well over a few thousand music reviews on this YouTube channel, and some of my most legendary, most notorious, and most infamous reviews have been Kanye West reviews. And for good reason, the guy is an envelope pusher, he is very controversial, he's a game changer, he's made some of the best music in hip-hop ever, period, and his albums tend to be very polarizing, or at least elicit very strong opinions out of fans and haters alike. And truth be told, a lot of my opinions on Kanye's music have rubbed many fans the wrong way. And maybe that's because I'm harsh, maybe that's because I tell it like it is, maybe that's because I'm just not sipping the Kanye Kool-Aid as much as some people are. And as a result, I've gotten a lot of requests. A lot of requests. A lot of people pestering me over the years. You have to re-review this record, you have to re-listen to this record, you have to re-review this, talk about this again, you, you, you didn't listen to it the right way. <laughs> the Life of Pablo, though, that record still kind of haunts me a little bit to this day, and, and maybe the reason that that is, for me personally, has been just the lost potential on the record, at least in the initial rollout, because if anybody remembers, which maybe some people don't, and maybe some people never will fully realize, because the, the version that was originally up of the album online, I don't know where you're gonna find it unless you illegally download it or something like that, because you can't purchase the album, and all streamable versions of the record right now are the newest, most well-mixed, most up-to-date version of the record with the longer track list. But the initial mixes of this record were pretty rough. A lot of the songs, very messy. Even Kanye West acknowledged himself, like, Wolves could have come out so much better. Which also applies to many of the other tracks on the record as well, but even upon initial release, The Life of Pablo stood as Kanye's uh, grand experimental opus, one of his oddest and most challenging records, an album whose very wild rollout and PR campaign I think made the record interesting, but simultaneously I think it held back its sound from being as well assembled and as fully formed as it could have been. Now as it has been documented, there have been multiple versions, multiple updates to this record on streaming services since its initial release in February of 2016. It was actually updated uh, about all the way until June. And I also did a video reacting to at least some of the updates thus far on the album, but that was only in April. So I was really only reacting to the April updates of the record, the spring updates. I will leave a link to those videos down there in the description box. I will also link them at the end slate in this video. I recall at the point of me hearing the spring updates to the album, the record sounded cleaner and I was more pleased with the product of the album, but it was still a very flawed project. I could have even seen myself scoring the album differently based on that new mix. Still though, at that point I felt like I had had every experience with the record that I was going to have and that it wasn't necessarily pulling me in as hard as it initially was. But just the other week I kind of got this desire, I got this itch to listen back to tracks like Famous and Ultralight Beam, which even at the initial release of the album I loved those tracks, I thought they were really catchy and fun and hilarious. But once I put the album on it was like I, I was hearing the songs completely new, completely over again, completely for the, the first time and it was just like it was like a little bit of a mindfuck moment because I didn't know that there were new versions between April and June because uh, it's just a mosh pit sort of following as many records and releases and doing as many reviews as I do and I wasn't keeping track of every little update that was happening to the life of Pablo. I figured the mixes from February to April weren't going to get that much better and I had heard an earlier version of St. Pablo too so I didn't really think that adding that to the record was really going to uh, change the album up that much. However, I am much more impressed with the final version, and I think the track is an excellent closer for the record too, and says a lot about the themes of love and family that Kanye runs throughout the album. It, it is a better finisher than Fade, which honestly with this new mix has also grown on me. The grooves and the synth bass lines on that track are so much better and bouncier and more rubbery and delicious. The point I'm trying to make here with this video is this 
I guess, essentially final version of the album is the version of the life of Pablo that I wanted all along. Like, this is pretty much the fullest potential that I could see coming out of this album, and in my opinion, it's great. It's really one of Kanye's riskiest and bravest albums yet, if not one of the bravest albums in mainstream rap. It's totally freaky and out there and strange and exposes Kanye's weird side in this incredibly raw way that we've never seen before. But on top of it, we're seeing Kanye at this incredible point of vulnerability that I don't really think we've seen him deliver to us either on tracks like Real Friends, on tracks where he's singing about his love for his kids, uh, his love for his wife, uh, the song Wolf Wolves, thinking uh, about sort of that uh, robbery incident that happened with Kim Kardashian, almost seems like a premonition of sorts, kind of eerie and haunting to think of that in, in, in the light of that song. And there are still some tracks on here that strike me as maybe being a little thrown together, a little lazy, like, like Father Stretch My Hands Part 2. It's basically, it's just a designer panda remix with Kanye's vocals just auto-tuned riffing over it, please. But the vast majority of these songs are really sounding better than ever in my opinion. Of course, Ultralight and Famous still sound hard and heavy and fantastic. Love the gospel vocals on that intro. Feedback is just so manic and wild. As is Freestyle 4. Fuck My Life featuring The Weeknd. I loved that song prior, but now it just seems so much more chilling, and I feel like Kanye's fear and his anxiety with his behavior sort of taking his family away from him, the reality of that seems so much more real. The idea is translated so much better. And that's another thing that I'll, I'll say has helped out this album on the whole with these tweaks, with these new mixes. I feel like all the weird ideas, all the experimental ideas, and all the lyrical, the emotional, the thematic ideas that run through this album translate so much better. And it actually kind of makes the record feel so much less like a mess. Even though texturally and stylistically it may seem like it's cobbled together and sort of random and kind of like a rap album deconstructed, if you look at a lot of what Kanye's rapping about on this album, it's pretty watertight. Because on a lot of this album, it's like there's this constant push and pull between wanting to be a responsible and, and loving husband and father, wanting to do better by his friends and by his family. There's this pull to be a good person, a spiritual person, but then on the flip side, there is that egoism. There is that element of destructive behavior that Kanye just can't seem to let go of. Previously, tracks on this thing that were on the louder side came off to me as being a little cluttered and messy and awkward. Meanwhile, the more skeletal moments on the album, like Wolves, for example, just kind of fell flat on their face. But now, both of these sides of the record, in my opinion, have really reached a happy medium. Of course, this album still does have a rough aesthetic to it, but now it doesn't feel like it's kind of impeding the, the success of these songs to actually get their musical, their rhythmic, and their lyrical ideas across effectively. If I could take all the experience I have now, take this record, bring it back to 2016, rescore it, and place it somewhere on my year-end list, I'd have to say I'd feel maybe like a decent to strong eight on this and probably throw it somewhere in my top 15 of 2016. And say easily, this is really my favorite thing Kanye has done this decade. And this album is definitely him overcoming that awkward phase where he was kind of experimenting with weirder styles or weirder takes on rap music with his previous album, Yeezus. I'm glad I ended up revisiting this thing. I'm glad the ideas on here, though they were very messy and, and cobbled together, it seemed, at first, uh, were interesting and intriguing and experimental and out there and wild and unique enough to actually stick with me in my head and make me think, if only, if only. Just wanted to say that, just wanted to get that out there, because I, I think it's interesting the album has been changed as many times as it has, and, and how, as a result, my opinion on the record has changed. Name one genius that ain't crazy. I guess, is, is how I'll end this, this revisit to Kanye's The Life of Pablo. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Transition, have you given this album a listen? You probably have, it's from 2016. <laughs> Over here next to my head are a few other videos that you can check out if you would like. And uh, that's gonna be it for this one, guys. I'll see you in another video at some point in the future, I'm sure. Okay, Anthony Fantano, Life of Pablo Forever.